So next up is our project, Escapade, where the adventure begins. So let's quickly meet Austin, Miranda, and myself. Hi, I'm Austin. Uh, I graduated from UWC uh, with a BA in economics and finance. I had a professor my senior year kind of tell me um, if I wanted to expand my knowledge in economics, I should get into coding. And once I graduated, I kind of kept with it, learned from it, and uh, found Dev10. And now on Monday, I'll be starting with Hilton. Hi, everyone. My name is Miranda Jasperson. I originally went to school at University of Wisconsin Parkside, and I got my bachelor's degree in biology. Uh, over the last few years, I've been working as a firefighter and paramedic, and I also run a small business, uh, fabrication business that specializes in 3D printing. Uh, I first got into coding actually through my small business. I was working on some firmware modifications for my 3D printers and upgrading some of the other um, devices on there, and I had to do some coding. I got into it, really started to enjoy it, and I ended up at Dev10. I'll be starting with Northwestern Mutual next Tuesday. Awesome, and I'm Eka Kulo, and I graduated last year from uh, UW-Madison with a degree in computer science amongst some other things. Uh, I've been programming for a little bit now, but I got distracted with cybersecurity for a couple years in college. So I came to Dev10 looking for an enriching experience in uh, software development, and I found that here in the cohort, and I'll be venturing on to Prudential Financial on Monday. All right, so the outline of our presentation, we're going to start off with brainstorming, kind of show you where we started from. Uh, we're going to introduce the project and then their process, or then follow up with our learning goals and finish off with our challenges and takeaways. So you may be wondering, <clears throat> what is Escapade? So pretty much, Escapade is a virtual exploration and adventure planning application. Um, it allows you to plan activities, discover new locations, and kind of create an adventure where you can schedule activities on your virtual calendar. We came up with this idea because everybody's kind of been in that place at one time or another where you're bored at home, you don't really know what to do, or you kind of have a brief window of time and you're trying to find something to do with some other people and you're looking for a way to plan that activity. And that's where Escapade was born. All right, now for the technologies. Okay, so for on the, on the client side of things, for our user interface, uh, we utilized a variety of different things. Some of our learning goals were 3JS, Canvas, um, Open Weather Map API, Google, React Dry. Um, so if you can look at the, at the slide, actually, there's a 3D globe. Um, that is actually what renders on our homepage. That was kind of my big goal for the learning portion of this uh, process. And that was uh, something that I kind of came to the conclusion I wanted to try because I had some experience in 3D modeling and I really enjoy it. And when I saw that there was actually a way to bring that to the computer side of things, I wanted to try and tackle that goal. So I took it upon myself to learn kind of how to do some 3D rendering in a web, web application. And I was able to come up with a 3D globe that actually spins and interacts along with a star background that actually has uh, twinkling effects. And we also threw a interactive nav bar along the top of our application uh, with uh, on-click event handling. So it actually responds to your mouse clicks. And then uh, we integrated a weather API that allows you to check your uh, location that you plan on your, making your event and check how the weather and the conditions are, conditions are during that time. Yeah, and then on top of that, we also included two Google APIs. Uh, thanks to Google, they gave us a generous $300 credit uh, to provide both the maps and the places. Um, I mean, they're a huge company that has a lot of resources, so they're a great um, API to work with. It was a little challenging at first, um, but once we got it um, working with our app, it was just made a lot better. So then on the server side, we created that with Java and MySQL and other tools we learned over the course of the cohorts. <clears throat> we also learned about JPA and decided to incorporate that as well. So JPA is intended to create a streamlined connection between our database and our application. Uh, and it definitely came with its own challenges. Uh, and then uh, of course we tested with J units, consistently checking all of our functionality of the, of the backend as we created those functions. 
All right. And then for the last technologies that we used, uh, GitHub was huge. Uh, let us all kind of branch off and do our own thing um, and then come together and push our work and make this uh, project uh, complete as it is. And then Docker was huge as well, helped us deploy onto AWS for the public. Uh, and because of how easy it is to use within five minutes, we can roll out updates as need be. So our process began with brainstorming session at the beginning of the two weeks to come up with the Escapade app. And then we would continue on planning and deciding our next uh, immediate steps and tasks to prepare for in the near future. Then we would uh, repeat this meeting and discussing and brainstorming and planning sessions in our daily standups. But honestly, we actually met more than daily. We would check in with each other every couple hours on average. We also worked on uh, GitHub to connect all of our code together. Every time we began a new step, we would make a branch for it and uh, clean it up before pushing it over to the main uh, chunk of code. And as we managed our process, it um, ended up uh, looking like three different st stages, the server side, like we talked about, and the client side, like we talked about. And then at the end, the AWS packaged and uh, deployed with uh, Docker and AWS. So our target audience was people with free time looking to fill it with a fun new activity. So for example, Miranda, Austin, I'm free all day Saturday. How about you guys? I am now. Yeah, first time in four week, 14 weeks, I'm down, let's go. <laughs> Awesome. I'm free from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. How about you two? Oh, I'm going to sleep in a little bit. I'll go uh, about 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, I'm good anytime after noon. All right. All right. Let's call it 12 to 5 o'clock. Great. Let's schedule a fun adventure between 12 to 5. If I'm only there was it. a useful tool to discover and neatly schedule fun activities in a specific time span. <laughs> well, that's where Escapade comes in. Take it away, Austin. All right, let's get this registering going. I'm excited. This app oh, wow. already looks amazing. We got a spinning earth, we got stars. That definitely makes me want to go on an adventure. Yeah, so let's make an account. Oh, look at that, autocomplete. <laughs> I'll have to be just like that. All right, let's log in. Oh, look at that. There I am on my profile page. Nice. All right, so as I said, I'm free all day Saturday. Uh, looks like I celebrated this yesterday, the <laughs> death and celebration. But yeah, so where do where you guys think of going? Where would you uh, like to take an adventure to? Uh, I heard about this weird dragon place. What, what country was that in? Do you remember uh, that, Ege? Oh, yeah, it was uh, Barcelona. Barcelona, my bad. I'm sorry, Ege. I didn't mean to take that away from you. Oh, wait, never mind. Uh, how's the weather like by you? Oh, I'd be happy to not be here. I'll say that much. Oh, man, it's hot. Yeah, <laughs> Barcelona is actually, I'm kind of surprised. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it wasn't look time. at that. Let's see how you guys are doing. Oh, Oof. Okay. Never mind. Never yeah, mind. Uh, I think Barcelona is actually the coolest place. It's just Barcelona impressive. Is the place to go. All right. Well, let's uh, let's explore Barcelona a little bit. Oh wow, pretty cool place. Man, they even have an IKEA. That's insane. <laughs> you might have to come back to that. All right. Well, let's explore a little bit. Oops. Let's go uh, maybe right here. Wrong drop place. I believe it was here. That spot looks uh, nice too. It does look nice. Let's look at the IKEA. <laughs> ah, beautiful. Oh, wow. That's actually pretty cool. 
Looks bigger than the one here in Minneapolis. That is actually massive. All right, well, let's get our adventure going. All right, so like you said, you wanna go to the Dragon Stairs? Yeah. Yeah, and I think we can get a flight out tomorrow. Get there by uh, noon. And then end the day at five, so we can take our flights back home. Let's see, we're going to Barcelona. The Dragon Stairs. It's a very, very fast flight. It's, I think you have to write Barcelona, Spain, and then Dragon Stairs. That's right. I don't know Spanish either, so I don't know what that says, if that's it or not. Oh, you just had it. I just saw it. Uh, there we go. <laughs> All right, and this is going to be an outdoor event. It'll definitely be free because the flights might cost money, but yeah, deals will be free. All right, so might take a little bit of a second. Let's refresh. There we go. Look at we that long adventure. Let's uh stop for lunch at that IKEA. What do you guys think? Go for some IKEA meatballs over in Spain. Sounds meatballs. great. All right, we'll do that uh, also tomorrow. What do you guys think for lunchtime? Eh, probably around 1.32. 1.32. All right. Perfect. Oh, look at that right there. And that will be... That's pretty cool, man. So I will make it both. And yeah, it's definitely going to cost just a little bit of money. And let me refresh one more time. There we go. Look at that. Let's submit this. And look at that little calendar and have our whole day planned out for us. We got Dragon Stairs and the Swedish Meeples IKEA in Barcelona. And look at that. It's even. Awesome. Uh, Shown all right there for us. Yeah, it even shows your previous activities. Shows our previous activities. Well, I'm excited for tomorrow now. Me too. See you guys then. All right. So now on to our challenges. Uh, we definitely have a lot of challenges with merging. Um, a lot of the conflicts. We had this one file that didn't work, uh, but we overcame it. We got a shout out um, help from the instructors and they were a huge help for that. Um, along with that JPA, uh, we thought it was gonna make actually life easier um, with having less code, but with having less code, that creates um, kind of more mysterious uh, things going on in the back end that we had to figure out. Um, but as you can see, in the end, it all worked out. Yeah, another one of the big challenges was definitely compatibility with some of the more uh, creative side of things on React because we noticed a lot of issues with like, compatibility between Canvas and there were some conflicts with React Router and certain times the rendering of the Canvas would actually overtake parts of the screen where the nav bar wouldn't function or the nav bar would kind of hijack Canvas and the other 3D modeling. Uh, but yes, re rendering like the 3D model was a bit challenging and then kind of integrating that with some of the other technologies we've learned in class was definitely a big challenge. We also had some fun uh, encounters with my power because apparently my hometown over the last two weeks during capstone had some weird tragic accidents where power lines were getting taken out by car accidents and there were weird fires on like the main street of our town so that was definitely an unexpected challenge we did not expect to deal with during capstone uh, and i'll just emphasize how difficult jpa actually was uh, we wanted it to help us with uh keeping a lot of the code behind closed curtains, but that just uh, made it more difficult. I wish we wanted to take a look behind those closed curtains multiple times, but uh, we also decided to integrate JPA into our security with like logging in and registration. And um, we easily could have avoided that, just kept JPA secluded to 
the rest of the project and just done security as we had known to do it because it ended up being very complicated, but I'm, it was a good learning opportunity. We got out the other end uh, alive, so. Some of the steps we plan on implementing in the future, um, as you can see, there was a profile page there and a friends button. We have planned, we plan in the future to implement almost like a social media aspect to the, to the escapade program because Ideally, we'd like to not just be able to create events with your friends, but also invite your friends to those events. So uh, we plan to implement almost like a where the adventure page is where you could see all of your adventures. It would also open up public adventures where you could create an event, uh, either public or private, and event, uh, invite other users to your event. So it would allow you to make friends that maybe have different interests than your normal friend group or invite your current friend group to do those activities and then populate the calendar. Um, we'd also like to implement a machine learning aspect to the program that would suggest adventures based on users' previous selections. And now questions. That was really, really neat. And the styling was incredible. I mean, I, I really well done. So Jessica has the first question here. Um, she wants to know, how are you able to implement Canvas into the front end? The globe, it's impressive. And I know you talked a little bit about the challenges associated with that, but how did that actually play out? So <clears throat> I'll take that one. So pretty much the Canvas was very difficult. Like I've been actually before this, ever since we learned about it in class, I was looking into Canvas because I thought it was super interesting because it doesn't just allow what we did with 3D modeling, uh, but it also allows you to do other types of rendering. And that was a bit tricky. I had to look into 3JS and React 3JS and another portion of it called Dry, which actually allows you to place the canvas inside of a container. And then that container is specifically styled outside of like the rest of the application. It literally, I think it was involved one, two, three, like six different components that we had to create just for that page. And then kind of learning about all the different aspects of it because there's like setting a scene because you actually just have to set a background almost like a virtual environment. And then you create the model with like um, sizing and like every aspect of it, like if it's a sphere versus a cube, it was a lot of work, it was really complicated. But if you like stuff like that, I, I definitely recommend it. It was a lot of fun and I learned a lot from that. Excellent. Well, and this, you set us up good for Arena's question, um, which is she'd like to know, and let's hear from, you know, each of you, unless they, they overlap, what was the piece of tech from this project that you were most excited to keep digging into as you go into your career or for fun? Um, probably uh, AWS was definitely interesting how uh, actually deploying the project to the uh, to the web and keeping it uh, accessible to the user, and uh, it's I'm also very interested in like secure in the security as I mentioned, so like registration and, and logging in and different things related to that and um, making sure things can stay as as secure as possible. I hope to keep learning about that in my career. Yeah, same with uh, Ege on the AWS. I mean, there's so much to it. If you look at the website, it doesn't even look like we even scratched the surface of what AWS can do. Um, even that course that we did take, I think it was uh, 120 videos or something like that. Um, or maybe hours, I can't exactly remember. Um, but yeah, just learning more about that and everything that you can do with it, I think uh, definitely great to learn. Um, and I, uh, I agree with that the AWS was interesting. I also really enjoyed Docker. I thought Docker was really interesting, um, just being able to package applications for deployment because it took away a lot of issues with not necessarily having everything set up the right way when you could just put it into a small package and really just deploy it and it's ready to go along with some of the more front end user stuff because we did a lot of back end, which I really enjoyed, but there's a lot of stuff on user interface and developing on the front end that I found really interesting that I'd like to learn more about that I didn't get a chance to learn during class. But I, I mean, I enjoyed everything we learned for this deployment and I thought it was really interesting. Fantastic. Well, you guys did a, a absolutely great job. You should be incredibly proud of um, the application that you put out there. And I always forget to ask people that actually get things deployed. Did you send it to someone once you had it out there? What, was there a person that you're like, look, we got it deployed. Um, that you sent your link to to see if it worked? 
Uh, so we had the first version deploy. Um, once we tried updating, we had a little trouble with our UI. Um, it didn't like Google Maps API for some reason. So um, unfortunately, all we got at this point is just our backend um, after implementing Google API. But uh, if it did work, yeah, yeah, I'd probably send it out somewhere. It's not easy. So I know it's there's a, that that um, desire to get something deployed and and learning the process. You know, that's that's half the battle. But actually making it happen, I know it's you have very little time. So I, I respect that you even attempt it. But really well done, you guys. Really, really neat application. Uh, round of applause. 